Welcome back everybody to another episode of Madras Arsenal. Today we're going to be talking about the Wolverine, which is a uh, very unique design, something that is based upon an original 1921 piece that I have in my personal collection. This was used by the Chindits in World War II uh, and pre-World War II, uh, fighting against the Japanese in the jungles of Burma and uh, even parts of India. So let's get started on the specs and let's look at this awesome beast of a knife. All right, so the first thing that you're going to notice is that there is no uh, cho on these. That is because these are not really a traditional Nepalese design. Uh, to my knowledge, they were never used by the Gurkhas. It was more used, as I said, by the Chindits, which was basically a guerrilla unit uh, formed by uh, various um, British and then later uh, American advisors. But um, if you notice, the handle is a little bit different. It's, uh, it's actually probably closely related to the uh, Enup, uh, which is, a, if I'm not mistaken, like a, a Thailand um, design. But uh, I did use a kukri-style sheath, uh, since that's what my maker is most familiar with. Um, but that the handle is strikingly different than a kukri. Um, it's, more, it's definitely straighter. Um, it has a nice little notch right here, so that you know, it gives you a good uh, grip so it's not going to slide out of your hand, um, you know, whereas the kukri kind of flares out at both ends. Um, all the weight is centered around this belly right here. And let me go ahead and get this one out. Okay. So the belly on mine is a little bit uh, wider, as you can see. But it does have a nice point right here for thrusting. Um, all this is uh, just uh, packing grease as well. So I like to keep them well oiled so they don't uh, rust. But um, as you can see, it's got a very nice uh, point at the end and it can be very effective for thrusting and then this belly is an excellent chopper because all this force is right here on that nice little sweet spot <laughs> it is an excellent blade for chopping wood i have chopped quite a bit of logs with it different styles oak pine it actually did a surprisingly well job at uh chopping down oak or not chopping down but chopping firewood uh, the handle is just like the original. It's going to be full tang. Okay. Just exactly the same as, uh, as the original. And you can see here the brass uh, rivets. <coughs> Three just like the original as well. And uh, I would imagine this would probably be made of rosewood, which is exactly the same as what uh, my reproduction is made of. And right here... It has a small serial number, uh, as well as, actually it's company 2G, 1921, and it's got the broad arrow on it, right up here. <coughs> um, I've come across uh, quite a bit of uh, faked items in the, in the past to know that this is actually an original that was issued. Now, I'm not sure exactly what company of, you know, second G means. Um, I doubt the G stands for Gurkhas. Uh, it just does not seem like something that would be fitted into their kit, uh, given the fact that they are already going to be carrying Kukris. Um, and I doubt this is going to be a private purchase item as well. Uh, this is probably something that was made by a local armor in a village, perhaps, um, when these guerrilla units were being formed and uh, equipped. So it looks like it was hastily uh, made. Uh, you can see the different hammer marks right here. Uh, the metal appears to be more soft because it's, uh, it's pretty worn down. And the grinding um, on the blade really is not the best quality, honestly, on this original piece. Uh, it's very crude, very rough. And it just leads me to believe that it was hastily made. Uh, I did not see any serial number on the spine, uh, nothing on the handle. It did not come with a sheath. Um, but I would imagine the sheath would be something similar to this, or perhaps made out of just a couple of pieces of leather sewn together and a couple of loops for a belt strap. <clears throat> but uh, this, this is called the Wolverine. It's, uh, like I said, it's an exact 
a replica of, uh, of my original 1921 piece right here. And it is something unique. Um, it's a very, very, very uh, effective knife. And like I said, you know, if you have to defend yourself, you have a very sharp point uh, for thrusting. Um, you know, something that attacks you out in the wild. Uh, it's good for defense. It's excellent for chopping. I mean, it's basically like having a little hand axe. And uh, all that weight is just... It's so good. Um, you can, I mean, it's... It's very, very easy to wield. Uh, it is a little bit on the heavier side, uh, close to two pounds, but uh, that is a lot of steel right there. So definitely, if you are swinging it around, make sure that you have good, tight control over it because you don't want to let this thing get loose. Um, even the original is pretty close to that weight as well. Um, unlike a kukri where you can, uh, you know, like a traditional kukri where you can uh, wield it very easily, this one is uh, a little bit heavier, um, which Yes, I know for all you hikers and uh, campers, added weight it can slow you down at times, but it is worth it to have, um, if, or at least have a kukri, a lightweight traditional kukri, such as the Hamilton that, uh, that I offer. But uh, that is that on the, uh, on the Wolverine. I just wanted to show you guys this, uh, since I have not been able to do a video of it. Um, and we're going to uh, chop with this here for a few seconds and show you guys what all it can do. We're just going to take this little section and we're just going to start chopping. <clears throat> I'm really not putting a lot of force into this. And I have not even sharpened this. This is straight out of the sheath. This is a brand new one. As I said, you can see with the uh, oil coating on it. But it puts a really nice, good, I mean, you can get some good chunks out of this. So, there you have it, <coughs> the uh, Wolverine. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, definitely be sure to stop by and uh, check it out on the website. I'll be providing a link uh, in the description where to buy it. But that's it. <clears throat> Alright guys, if you have not done so, be sure to check out my Patreon. There's uh, quite a bit of incentives there for the uh, for you viewers. And for the patrons, um, there's a lot of discounts, uh, quite a bit of offers. It's uh, come down to where YouTube has basically uh, censored a bunch of the uh, gun channels, survival channels, homesteading channels, uh, anything that's related to this kind of stuff, bushcraft, survival, all that stuff. Uh, they've really limited the uh, ad revenue to basically where you don't get anything for your videos anymore. Uh, I spend quite a bit of time on my videos, uh, especially with the Martini Henry stuff, and uh, that costs quite a bit of money to make each video, uh, to go out to the range, provide the ammunition, get the weapons, things like that. So the Patreon really helps keep these channels going. Um, it's about the only alternative that I've been able to see. Um, different people have spoke about Miwi. There's just really not a whole lot of uh, uh, viewership on Miwi. It's, it's still extremely small. But uh, check out the Patreon. There's a ton of incentives, discounts, things like that. And uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the newsletter tonight. It's coming out. And we'll be talking about Romania, the recent trip there. We got to see Vlad's uh, castle, real castle. So uh, stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys here shortly.